Nicole from the Netherlands. And I'm Andrea from Portugal. And we're here in Lund, Sweden at Lund University. We will now meet Asa Peterson, who's running the HD lab, and see what the researchers are doing. Let's go? Yes. Hello. Hello. Hi, Asa Peterson, nice to meet you. Hi, Hi. Nicole, nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Welcome to the lab. Thanks. Thank you. Come on in. Yep. So Asa, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm an associate professor here at Lund University in Sweden and I run a research lab focusing on hunting disease. I've been doing HD research now for 16 years and today um, I run the lab but I also work as a clinician uh, in the psychiatry clinic and then I see patients with HD at the neurology clinic here in Lund. That sounds very interesting. Uh, how many people do, do work at the lab? Well, in my lab, there are three PhD students, three postdoctoral fellows, and four part-time technicians who have different types of expertise. And then we have one part-time administrator helping us. That's a big team. Can you tell us a little bit about the work uh, where, that you do here? Yes, so we're looking at uh, changes in emotion and body weight control in Huntington's disease. And we're thinking this is coming from a different region in the brain that has been uh, not studied very well before, and it's called hypothalamus. It's the central station of emotional and body weight control. And that's what we're looking at. Okay, can you see a little bit about the labs now? Yeah, of course, come, thanks. So, Essa, we are in the lab now. Um, what do we see here? So, this is a room where we look at brains. And uh, here is Sophia, who is now cutting a brain in very thin slices, so we can look at it in more detail. So, Sophia, what is it that you are doing here? So, here I'm sectioning a mouse brain, so I'm cutting it into very, very thin sections. Okay, and why do you do that? So we want to look what happens in the brain, and then we, we cannot look at the whole brain at once. We need it in really, really thin sections. So here, I cut them at 35 micrometers, so it's very thin, so it's about 30 sections in one millimeter. Yeah. How can you see um, if there is something different than usual in a normal brain? So right here, when I'm just cutting them, I cannot see that. So that's what we, we need to use other methods. But to be able to, to look at this, we need this thin section. So this is just a pre-state um, pre that we are doing when we are sectioning these brains. So Asa, what are we doing at this station? So here is Rachel who has now stained some of those thin brain sections so that we can actually see the neurons in the brain. Seems interesting. Rachel, can you show us a little bit? Yeah, I can. So over here we've got brain sections that have been stained. And um, so what, what we do is we line them, line them up from the front of the brain to the back of the brain. And what we want to do is to put them on glass lights. Okay, can you explain this? Why do you stain them? This staining helps us to visualize like certain populations um, of neurons that we're interested in so that we can have a look at them under the microscope later on. Uh, how do you feel about your work when you know it can, it can help so many people? Um, I think it's a real privilege to be working on something that has um, immediate clinical implication um, and knowing that you can, that the work you're doing here in the lab, um, potentially it, it can help lots of people and I think it's a great honor. What's happening here, Essa? We're not only looking at mouse brains, but we're also studying human brains. And Sanas here is working on this. Sanas, this looks really interesting, but I don't know what I'm looking at. So can you explain to me what this is? So these are sections coming from a human brain. So what you see here is a section that uh, hasn't been stained at all. Mm -hmm. So what you see is that the section is completely transparent. So what we need to do now is to use different me methods in order to visualize what's actually on this section. Okay. So the different cell populations. Yeah. So we can do that with various methods. So one method is where you can see has been done on these sen uh, three sections here is that we've uh, taken the section and we just put them in a specific dye that will stain everything that's on the section. So basically you get to see all the different cells that are there under a microscope, that yeah. is. It looks really beautiful. Yeah, it is. <laughs> 
And then here, there uh, is a section where we have used another technique where you, instead of seeing everything that's in the section, that is all the cells, you get to see specific cell types. So if you're interested in a specific cell type like orexin, you get to see, uh, you can stain it and just see those cells in the entire section. So what you see here is that there's, uh, the section is only stained in a cer uh, certain areas and in certain spots. And that's what you are looking for. Exactly. Okay. So where do you get those brains from? Do they come here by the hospital or? So these brains, they have, uh, we've received them from a brain bank in Sydney, Australia that have been donated by people that have had HD and uh, healthy controls as well. Okay. So they came all the way to Sweden exactly. just for you. Exactly. So they've been traveling a long way. Asa, who will we meet here? Here we're going to meet Rana, who's in the microscope room and looking at the stained cells. Come on in. Yes. Rana, can you tell me what you're doing here? Yeah. Here uh, we are using this computerized microscope to count the number of cells in the brain. Okay. Uh, why is it so important to count them? It's important because we want to uh, look at the structural changes and changes in the cell populations in the brain. And to be able to do that, we need to, uh, we need to uh, get a quantitative data. Okay, uh, if you do it uh, by hand and not using a machine, you will take a very long time, I imagine. Yes. But uh, normally, how many hours do you spend here? Uh, several hours, I would say. It also depends on uh, what kind of brain uh, cells I am counting. It would, it would be like more like 10 hours a day. Sometimes more than that. We are at the next station. Uh, what's going on here? So here you'll meet Barbara, who's actually measuring the protein that's causing the damage in Huntington's disease. Okay. Barbara, what do you do here? What I'm doing here is a technique called Western blot which is a very well-established technique to visualize proteins. What happens is that through electricity, they're separated by size, and then we can recognize them. What does this protein or this Huntington protein do? So there are two types of Huntington. One is a good type, we can call it, and one is a bad type. And the bad type is bigger, so we can see them by differences in size. And one, of course, the bad one is important for the disease, responsible for the damages in the disease. Mm -hmm. There you have your green box, but how do you actually see what you've measured? What you see is that later, by taking an image of the, uh, of the protein, and as you can see here on the, on the screen, we have what I told you about before. So there was a good protein and a bad protein, and you can separate them by size. The bad one is bigger than the, than the good one. So we can recognize them in this way. And is this the only way of measuring the protein? No, actually there are new ways just developed and one of those is also here in our lab. Okay, so we will have a look at that later. Yes. <laughs> so here you'll meet Umar who's working on a new method to measure the Huntington protein. So, Omar, can you tell me a little bit about what you do exactly here? Uh, I'm measuring Huntington protein uh, using a technique called Alpha Lysa. Uh, this technology is uh, uh, based on uh, molecules that binds to uh, Huntington protein, and then we use laser to detect the uh, Huntington. So it's a new technique that you're using here. Um, so what are the differences between techniques? Yes, this is a new technique we are using uh, in our lab. Uh, the difference between this technique and the other techniques are that it's more sensitive and we can more precisely tell the number of Huntington molecule in a given sample. Seems exciting. Can you show us a little bit about sure. your work? Sure. So basically, uh, we use this plate and we use a small uh, amount of sample. We use these molecules that bind to the Huntington and then we incubate this plate for a given time and then we put that plate into the reader and then we uh, read the plates. It's very quick, uh, it takes few seconds to read the plate. Uh, I can, I, I can sh show you here. here. Here you can see that. So um, you can see these well, the, 
well that are in different colors so each color uh, representing the different amount of protein in well so uh, the red one has the highest amount of the proteins uh, compared to these uh, purple color we are interested in gene therapy so in order to test the uh, gene therapy effects we need to have a readout where we can uh, tell that the gene therapy is working and how much is working. So in order to do that, we need to have this assay where we can see how much of a good protein we have and how much of a bad protein we have. Okay, many thanks, Omar. Thank you. So we've seen a lot today, um, and now we're actually wondering what happens to the results after, you know, the results you get here, what do you do with it? So we write articles about the results and then we go to meetings and share them with the rest of the community because we're all working together towards the same goal to understand the disease and to cure it eventually. So that's how you keep in contact with the other researchers as well? Yes, yes. And that's very important for us. Yeah. Why is animal testing, is it, yeah, why is it so important um, in HD research? Well, Huntington's disease is really a complex disorder that's affecting the whole system in the body. So one cannot just look at cells to understand it. One needs to have the whole organism, the whole animal, to look at what, what happens with behavior and, and so on. So animal work is important for us to uh, come further uh, in the knowledge about Huntington's disease. Yeah. Okay. How did you get involved with HD research? Well, I got interested in Huntington's disease as a young medical student and then I started uh, to do research in the middle of my, my medical school studies and uh, did my PhD and uh, continued to work on it and the more I work on it, the more involved and passionate I get. So, And that just keeps continuing the feeling? Yes, yes, completely. Right. <laughs> um, how is research going at the moment and uh, what are the hopes for the future? I think there are great hopes. Um, although it's a rare disease, there are many very good research groups around the world who are working on this intensively. And as the disease is caused by only one gene, there is a great hope that we, through gene therapy, can silence the gene and stop the disease process and hopefully eventually cure it. As a, we really wanted to thank you for this tour. It was amazing. We loved the experience. And yeah, also thanks to all your researchers who took the time to explain everything to us in an easy way and we all understand it now. Let's just hope for the, the future we can have new hopes, uh, especially mm. with your help also. Well, thank you both and thank you to HDO for coming. It was our pleasure to host you here and uh, welcome back. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So that's it for us here in Lund. And we've had a fantastic day today and we hope that you've enjoyed it too. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Yep. Oh, <laughs> We will now meet Asa Peterson, who's running the HD lab, and meet some researchers. Let's go! Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, we're going to do that again. We will now meet Asa Peterson. <laughs> sorry, I have to start again. We will now meet Asa Peterson, who's running the HD lab, and meet. And Oi! <laughs> Welcome to the lab. Thank you. Do you want to come in? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, Asa, can you tell us a little about your about? Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Sorry, okay. yeah, so, so, Asa, can you tell us a little about your about? So, Asa, can you tell us a little about your I, 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 I'm, I'm oh, <laughs> And what are your, do you have any expectations of the future? Um. <laughs> <laughs> We need to retake that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Asa, who will we be? So, Barbara. <laughs> Barbara, what are we uh, exactly now? Take three. Yes, uh, so everyone's uh, really excited about this new technique here in the lab. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the difference between the two methods? Uh, there are. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, that's it for us here in Lund. We really have enjoyed our day today and we hope you've enjoyed it as well. So bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> ah, sorry. <laughs> we had a fantastic day today and uh, we hope that you enjoyed. Okay, <laughs> next. <laughs> it keeps on rolling, yes.
We have had a fantastic day today and we hope you have enjoyed it as well. And bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> and we have had. Okay, next. <laughs> Bloopers for Nicole. <laughs> you started with that. <laughs>